Okay, where are the suggestions? Uh, there was like 20 of them. Okay, yeah, okay, here, here we are, here we are. The ability to select a JVM to run each instance with. Okay, this one is fairly straightforward. So um, let's go ahead and add that. Uh, we'll do it in here. Um, so by the way, by default, Pandora Launcher will use basically the built-in Java binary that um, Mo uh, or like Microsoft slash Mojang recommends. Um, so this is like the same uh, Java binary that the vanilla Minecraft launcher will download by default. And I believe Prism launcher now also downloads the Mojang binaries by default. Um, I think MultiMC still requires you to manually select them. Um, but I, I think most launchers have have seen the light, so to speak, and are using the built-in uh, Java binaries now and not requiring users to manually configure them. But I guess this this user wants to manually configure them. So just for you, here you go, Java binary. I like having the, the enabled button because it means that, you know, you can like set up some like flags or whatever, right? Um, and then if you want to like, you know, you can like toggle it on and off to like um, see the difference. So I think having like the, the toggle button um, be separate instead of just being like, oh, if you want to remove the JVM flags, you just have to like clear the text box. I think having the toggle button is, is a little bit nicer. So by the way, if you guys didn't notice, the all the buttons in Pandora are sort of color coded. Um, if they do something or start something, they're green. Um, and then if they like open something like a folder or web URL or, you know, that sort of thing, it's blue. So like on Modrinth here, installing, green, opening the web page, blue. Um, you know, syncing here, opening the folders, blue. Um, you know, viewing the instances, blue, starting, it's green, creating an instance is green. So I don't know if anyone noticed that, but yeah, that's that's the color coding here. Here, launching the instance is green. What is the select Java binary uh, color coded? It's like updating something, right? So like, I think it should be green. So I think it took a while, 50 minutes, but there we go. There is override JVM binary done. Yippee. Uh, let's go ahead and commit this. So I do I do love reading all the nice comments though. It warms my heart. Suggestion, a local server. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, we're not gonna do the, the local server created just yet. That's a little bit a little bit out of scope just for now. I remember being quite annoyed that if I installed some mod and had like three dependencies that I would only find out later after launching the game. Is this somehow handled in your launcher? If not, can you please make it so dependencies install themselves automatically or perhaps a small window pops that asks you if you want to install or view the dependencies. Thanks and good work. Um, yes, so I will do this. Anyways, uh, so one from 10 here, we don't have any mods. Uh, let's add from Modrinth. Let's install Sodium Extra. Install three dependencies, hit install here. And look at that, it correctly installed three dependencies. Now it's, it should have installed the latest version. Again, if we go to, uh, what mod did I install? Sodium Extra. Um, Sodium Extra here. Um, Sodium Extra does not specify the version of these dependencies. It just specifies um, Sodium, uh, Reset Sodium Option and Iris Shaders. So it should have downloaded the latest of all of these. So Sodium required, it would have downloaded what? Uh, zero point, ooh, downloaded 0 0.7.3. Oh, wait, no, no, because no, we're on 1.10 here. Yeah, 1.10 here, and the lettuce is 0 0.7.3 for 1.10, okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm assuming the rest of these are, are up to date. Okay, perfect, yeah, and again, it downloaded the correct, if the correct version of Minecraft, Minecraft 1.21.10, so that is fantastic. All right, um, what's next? So we have automatic dependency downloading. All right, so what does this person ask? This person, I think, asked for a few things. Um, if we're gonna confirm three times, you'd be so kind as to place the cursor focus into the confirmation dialog box. Okay, here, delete this instance, on delete instance, I've read, and there we go. So that automatically focuses, so there. Um, multi-select in the mod list for enable, disable, and delete would be really nice. Okay, so we should now have instance mod selection. So if we click this, it becomes selected. If we control click this, um, we can add things to be selected. 
um, if we click on this and then we shift click, we can select multiple. Uh, if I like click on this and then I click on this and then I shift click this, um, this all works. All right, so now here we select multiple things and we toggle, bang, look at that incredible technology. Um, and then we can check for updates and we do have updates. Um, so let's select these four and then I'm going to hit this here. Yeah, in general, there we go. It updated both Sodium and Sodium Extra to the latest version. So that's working. We can now update multiple things. All right, uh, what else do we have here? A way to filter mods by Forge, Near Forge, Fabric, Utility, Mobs, Food, etc. Um, so this is basically just all the regular um, Modrinth filters. Um, so we can go ahead and add that. It seems reasonable. Okay, so let's see if we can now filter by loaders. So if I go fabric, um, these are all the fabric mods. Um, you know, the download count changes. I guess there's a bit of caching going on. <laughs> uh, anyways, we go forge here. Yeah, and these are the mods that only exist for forge, um, which doesn't include sodium. If I go neo forge here, doesn't include sodium. If I do fabric and neo forge and everything, then it should include everything, which is the same as. There we are. So now categories um, here, and then we click this. Um, oh, then it actually it expands because game mechanics is long. Okay, whatever. I mean, what can you do? Um, so you click that, and yeah, you can now filter by categories. Um, if you go back to it, it'll hide again. But yeah, I think that's and that's fine. Um, so yeah, you can now filter by the Modrinth category if you want. All right, what's up next? Um, like they already been asked, I'm anything works. But um, any plans for CurseForge API key? There will be CurseForge. Um, in the future, but um, it's not something I'm going to add in this video slash stream uh, because yeah, it is yeah you know, a little bit of work. No quilt, no jar mods, no legacy support, no magic mojo mod loader for cubic chunk. None, none of these words are in the Bible. I'm going to be honest. Um, I don't know. Eventually, but it's you know not a priority. Okay, I think those are all the suggestions um, on YouTube comments. So that's pretty good. Uh, now let's go over um, GitHub mod downloading feature request. Um, it would be nice if you could select all the mods you want to download and click install uh, like Prism Launcher does. It would make it easier than clicking install, waiting for install, then clicking next. Yeah, so he probably wants it to where you're on Modrinth here where you can just hit install. So if you go to an instance here, add from Modrinth, um, hit install here. Okay, so now uh, we go to an instance, we go mods, we do add from mod. Well, firstly, let me delete all the mods I added. Then we can go add from Modrinth here. If we make sure install latest is checked, we can now hit Fabric API and it will just um, install whatever the latest version is, like this. That is added. All right, one down, one down. Oh my god, this. I, I, I like, I, I add one feature request and two more feature requests. Uh, appear like it's crazy Okay, so next up command Q does not quit app on Mac OS Okay, so we do command Q that closes it. Yay, and I'm also do command W um, So I guess let's let's add that at the same time Okay, so yeah, basically now um, we can start an instance here And if we hover over this one we can do command W no, we can't, doesn't work. <laughs> Probably not, right? So here, okay, yeah, there we go. Comment this here. Um, also, make sure you use add from Modrinth on the instance page to skip the um, instance selection. Okay, account icon, not rendering second skin layer. There we go, trampoline. I think that's, I think that's working, right? Add head overlay to head image. There we go. So that is fixed. Okay, yeah, version. This does tell me version Java 1.8. Okay, so that's good. So we can close this here as fixed. Um, this person wants the ability to sync hotbar.mbt. It stores save hotbars would be cool to have across instances. Oh, C. Okay, C1. Okay, so then we can restore it with X1. Okay, cool. So that is saved. Okay, and let's look at our saved hotbar. Yes. 
Um, should we do that now? I don't know. I'm getting a little bit tired. Um, I've already done quite a lot of stuff today. I mean, let's just let's just look at all of the commits we've done. Um, what did what did we add? We added. Um, yeah, we fixed a bug with it not working on Java 8. We added a um, option to override the JVM binary. We added automatic dependency downloading. Um, we added being able to select multiple mods, you know, delete multiple at the same time, update multiple at the same time, etc. Um, automatic focusing of that. Um, we added filtering by loader and category to mod length. We added uh, an install latest button to allow you to install latest version of a mod length. Um, we added, uh, yeah, we fixed some some other bugs. We added some other keybinds. We we fixed some more stuff. So yeah, quite a bit, quite a quite a big day. But yeah, there you go. I'm gonna end the the stream and the video here um, for now. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I'll uh, I'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye bye. I might.